In this video lesson, we will learn how to graph exponential functions. So first, what do we mean by an exponential function? Well, exponents is when you have one number to some other power. So like 2 to the 3rd is an exponent, and 2 to the 4th, and 3 to the 6th, all of these are exponents. But what is an exponential function? An exponential function is an expression like y equals 2 to the x. Or another example could be 3 to the x minus 5. Or another good example is 20 to the 5x minus 16 plus 22. All that matters is that in an exponential function, you have a number to some xth power. So in the first case, just the x power. In the second case, x minus fifth power third case, 5x minus 16th power. But we have an x th that we're taking as a power. And that is what we call an exponential function. So now let's talk about how we're going to graph these. So there are two cases that we have to deal with when we're graphing exponential functions. One of them and the other one we have drawn on the left and right sides. So first let's look at 1 half to the x. The first thing is that the main difference between this example and the example to the right is that we have a curve going down. So it starts really high and then it curves down and gets really close to zero, but never actually reaches it. And in the other example, we have the opposite shape. It starts really low, really close to zero, but not quite, never actually touches zero, and then it goes up really high. The reason for this is that one of them has one half to the x, and one half is less than one, and the other has two to the x, and two is greater than one. So this overall shape is determined by what number you have that you're taking to the xth power. So if the number is smaller than 1 to the x, like 1 half to the x, it'll slope down. Otherwise, if you have, for example, 2 or 3 or 4, any, any number greater than 1 to the x, it'll slope up. It's also a note, useful to notice that when we plug in x equals 0 for these basic exponential functions, we get 1 because anything to the 0th power is 1. This really helps in graphing. And notice the reason why 1 half to the x gets closer and closer to 0 when x is increasing is because every time we increase x, we are multiplying by another 1 half. So we ended up with a fourth and an eighth. It gets smaller and smaller. So as x increases, Every time we multiply 1 half again, it gets smaller. Y gets smaller. But it does never equal 0. On the other hand, when we have y equals 2 to the x, well, first of all, when x gets larger, then, of course, it's going to get very large. You're just multiplying 2 very many times. But when x gets smaller, y will approach 0 for the same reason as it did for 1 half to the x when x got larger. So this doesn't really matter, but all you have to remember is that one of them curves down, another curves up. So let's take basic example, just 3 to the x. The first question is, well, of course we know when we plug in x equals 0, that we just get 3 to the 0 is 1. So the point zero one 1 we can immediately draw. Next is the overall shape. Since 3 is greater than 1, and that's the sort of barrier in question. As if, if the number is greater than 1, then we have the curve up. If it's smaller than 1, then we have a different situation where it curves down. But right now, it curves up. So now, just to help us be slightly more accurate, we'll plug in x equals 1 to get a second point, because anything to the first power is itself. So now I have two points, 
and that's enough to just make the graph. And there it is. And notice we start very close to zero, not at zero because it doesn't intersect zero, but very close. And then we curve up through the two points. That is what the graph should look like. And now we just label it y equals three to the x. So now we're going to look at the next example. y equals 3 to the x plus 1. This graph will be very similar to the one that we already have drawn. It's actually it's the same equation. The only thing we've done is just added 1 to it. And what adding this 1 means is shifting the graph by 1 up. So since we already have the graph of y equals 3 to the x, we can just draw it one unit higher. So instead of starting very close to 0, we're going to start very close to 1. And there we start. And then we go through one point above. And there is our graph, one unit higher than the previous version. And this new graph in blue is y equals 3 to the x plus 1. So really, these shifts will be most, most of the work that you need to be able to draw exponential functions. So now we're going to take a look at the final example, but it's going to be the hardest one too. 1 fourth to the x plus 1 minus 2. So this problem has many parts, and we're going to have to break them down a little bit. First, let's start with y equals 1 fourth to the x plus 1 minus 2. And the very simplest expression from this that we can start working with is just y equals 1 fourth to the x. The other things, the plus 1 and the minus 2, those will be shifts. So first, we're going to graph y equals 1 fourth to the x. All right, well, we already know, since it's a very basic exponential function, it's going to go through the point 0, 1. I already marked it on the graph. Next, since plugging in x equals 1 is very easy, we will also graph this point. When x equals 1, 1 fourth to the 1 is just itself, 1 fourth. So we get the point 1 comma 1 fourth. And it's on the graph now. All right, now the important part. 1 fourth is less than 1. This means that our graph will be curving downwards and getting very close to 0. Rather than starting close to 0, it ends close to 0. That is the general shape of our graph. Now we just have to draw it on our coordinate plane. So here it goes. And that looks about right. Here, let me correct that. All right. So this is a graph of y equals 1 fourth to the x. So now all we have to do is do a little bit of shifting it to the right and left and up and down. So first of all, what exactly are our shifts going to be? Let's take a closer look. So we have 1 fourth of the x plus 1, and the whole thing has minus 2. So the x plus 1 together means a shift 1 unit to the left. And then the minus 2 means a shift down by 2. But first, it's easier to graph one shift at a time. So I'm shifting this whole graph 1 to the left. And I'm doing it in blue ink. Notice, since we're shifting to the left, it's a left-right sort of shift. We're still getting really close to 0. But 
the rest of the graph is still shifted to the left. All right, so now we've done the shift to the left and the minus two, as I said before, it stands for a shift two downwards. So let's graph it. So instead of getting really close to zero, since we're shifting down by two, we're gonna get really close to negative two. And there it is, and we're swooping down. And I apologize for this ink. I'll cover it up pretty quickly to make it brighter. So this is the graph of our final equation that we want. And notice how it's getting really close to negative two when x is pretty big. And in just a second, since this is gonna be our final answer, we don't need the blue or the black graphs. I'll erase them and recolor the green graph black so it's easier to see. And this will be our final answer once we're done, done highlighting it. And that's it. There's a graph of 1 fourth to the x plus 1 minus 2. Thank you for watching this video lesson. I hope it helped.